Uh, Max Cullen had his first art exhibition in 1959. 51 years later, he wishes he'd concentrated exclusively on his painting and sculpting for the rest of his life, but he says people kept paying him to act. And act he has in countless plays, films and television series, picking up a clutch of awards along the way. All the more remarkable since he suffers from aphasia, a language disorder that makes it difficult for him to remember names. Playwright David Williamson once said of Cullen that his face was a map of all the faces of the world. He studied art with Brett Whiteley, acted, uh, acting with the fabled Hayes Gordon, and his memoir, Tell Em Nothing, Take Em Nowhere, is described as a searingly honest rogue's tale. Married to artist Margarita Georgiadis, Cullen now lives and paints in a converted picture theatre in Gunning near Canberra. He's currently touring with Bell Shakespeare in Twelfth Night, and I caught up with him in Melbourne. Max Cullen, right at the start of your book, you refer to a, a, a writer named Joyce Carey and a character that he created in a book called The Horse's Mouth, oh, yeah. a character named Gully Jimson. And you were a kid when you read that, and you said you, you kind of adopted the character. Well, in, in a way... Lots of facets of the Gully Jimson character became Max Cullen in life, didn't they? Well, I think I always wanted to be an artist from about the age of five, and uh, I was attracted to the to the library at, at school. I, I suppose I was about eleven years old, and I found this book about an artist uh, called The Horse's Mouth, and uh, Gully Jimson was a very colourful, seedy, desperate, grotty character. Somewhat shambolic. Yes. I've, I, I, I've been accused of being shambolic. But his, his personal life um, was a mess in many ways and and I'm going to draw the parallel with yours, the, the drinking, the infidelities, the, <laughs> the many affairs and in recounting your own life in that regard, your own personal life, you also allow yourself some moments of self-loathing. Some sense there that, that looking back on it and reflecting on it you weren't exactly happy with every moment of what you did. What I've always said is, uh, and I haven't always said it at all, but what I say frequently is what we hate in others is what's rotten in ourselves, and what attracts you to someone else is what you, is what you aspire to or, or appreciate. And I, I somehow aspired to the character of, of uh, Gully Jimson. I thought this is the way artists live, and I suppose that's the way I ended up living my life. The difference only being that Gully Jimson was was out of work. He just didn't get paid for his for his art, but I was always working. So tell me, tell me what is at the heart of your acting? Uh, I'd like to think the truth, but I, th I think at the heart of the acting is you get to play such terrific characters uh, that are very different from yourself. I'm no gun shearer, and I got a better tally than Johnny and Aramac Downs that year. The only fast thing about Johnny is his mouth. Foley would have a sheep shorn before Johnny could remove the fuzz from his own arsehole. Part of it's the challenge, I think, taking on the most unlikely job you can uh, imagine. But I was, I was brought up watching watching the movies and I'd come home from the movies as a kid and I'd, I'd be Humphrey Bogart or I'd be uh, uh, Red Skelton or I'd be Jimmy Cagney I, but I'd, I'd come home as that, as that character and I'd, and I'd dress up as this, this little kid and knock on the door with a, with a moustache stuck on and a hat on my head and I'd, and I'd say does Max, does Max Carlin live here? My mother would say, oh, just a minute, I'll go and check. And she'd go, no, he's not here. So I think, oh, that worked. No women. Ladies' lunch next door. She's no lady, Ivan. She just drove a mob of cattle across the never never. She deserves a drink like any man. Too bloody right. You called the book Tell Him Nothing, Take Him Nowhere. What's that about? Well, it's something my mother used to say. Now, uh, in 1940, I was born. And that year, my father contracted tuberculosis. We were sent to the Blue Mountains uh, for his health, and we moved into a 
in, 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 we were in the Blue Mountains in Lawson in a, what is a semi-detached house with, a, with four little rooms and it was all leaky and drafty and the plaster falling off and the, and the roof leaking and my father was ill and refused to go on the pension. Uh, and, but we could not tell anybody that my father had TB because uh, that was like the plague. So uh, if somebody asked you, tell them nothing. Take them, take them no. We don't, you say, oh, your father's got a cold. You obviously uh, have had lots of possibilities to build a career that was not going to involve a lot of money. <laughs> my, my, Every, uh, everything is related to the arts in what yes. you talked about. My uh, drama teacher, Hayes Gordon, he said to me once, don't spread yourself thin. And spread, just spread myself thin is exactly what what I've done, sort of doing a piddly little bit all over the place and going from being, a, being an artist, having exhibitions, then becoming an actor, they sort of you drop out of the art scene. So for 14 years I didn't have an exhibition and then to try and be, be an artist and have exhibitions again, oh, forget it. Could you have been better at any of those things had you focused totally on them? Absolutely, positively and utterly. Because when you leave something, then it, and it, painting in particular, if you stay away from painting and, and uh, you've been five years away from a, a, a painting you, and you, you've had all these great ideas going on in your head, you go back and you pick it up exactly where you left it off. Nothing's, nothing's progressed. It would be the same with, same with acting. You'd go, you'd go back into acting, you'd be terribly nervous. You'd think, well, why was it always so easy for me? Has aphasia been a problem for you in terms of, uh, as an actor, remembering names on stage? Yes. It can be a little tiny, weeny bit of a problem. It doesn't happen too often because um, it, it, once, you, once you get it into your head as, a, 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 as an actor, it's sort of in there. But in, in, in real life, I'm hopeless at remembering names and... Um, I, 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 uh, I get vertigo, so working on a proscenium stage is always difficult. And um, I, I hate people watching me when I'm working, which is very it's a bad. Bit of, a, bit of a problem. When you're an actor. That's <laughs> a, a major problem. You've obviously overcome that problem. Uh, yeah, I, I, I try to pretend that I'm hiding behind, a, behind another character, but in fact there's no hiding place, you know, on, on stage. Well, I suppose that's another reason that uh, that um, being an artist would appeal to you. You can you can lock yourself away in your studio and be very alone. The trouble is, I'm so critical of myself that I have to pretend I'm someone else when I'm painting. So uh, I really, mm, I, I take on, a, on another persona. Uh, I, I, I'm another person when I'm when I'm painting. Tell me the best things you've done. The things that you're proudest of. Survival, I think. <laughs> My father died aged 48, my brother died aged 49, my sister died uh, 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 just uh, about 60, and my mother was 80. My, both, both my daughters said to me, how come you're the uh, last man standing? I said, because I had to write the book. I, I think just, survival, just surviving has been a, a feather in my cap. I, I think some of it's to do with Stopping drinking for seven years and stopping smoking for seven years and then taking it up again with a vengeance, then, then stopping again for another few years. But um, instead of knowing when to stop and knowing that what it, whatever it is, if it's, a, if it's a habit, you can break it. And I'll, st I'll stop getting married over and over again. And, well, and you seem to have. I have absolutely settled down now. Uh, Spike Milligan uh, was able to write his own epitaph, which was, I told you I was sick. What would you write for yours? There's uh, Lenny Lower, my favourite Australian writer who wrote the great Australian funny book, Here's Luck. He wrote, Here lies Plumber Bob, died on the job, loved by the mob. I'd, I could change my name to Bob and be a plumber because I like that one so much, but I, I think I'd settle for Here Lies a Good Bloke. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you.